organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iron TV, hear from residents coping with the aftermath of a downtown fire this weekend. And learn how some local teens are turning poetry into comics. And in sports, hear more about the Hawkeyes' victory over Louisiana Monroe. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Thanks for tuning in to your Sunday edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan. I'm Adam Sullivan. And I'm Emily Bussey. Student residents are still coming to terms with the destruction left by an early morning fire downtown this weekend. I got my roommates up and we all kind of left. We, were, we didn't bring anything along with us because we figured we'd be able to get right back in the building. It didn't look like a big fire, but obviously we were wrong. Shortly after 2 a.m. on Saturday morning, a fire started at 225 Iowa Avenue, which houses students' apartments and Brugger's Bagels. Over 10 fire trucks and assistance from 11 other fire departments attempted to control the flames, which spread to nearby buildings. Johnson County ambulances and the American Red Cross also responded to the fire, and one was resident was treated on the scene. Student residents are still displaced today after the fire ravaged the apartment buildings. Officials say they are still investigating the cause of the fire, but a huge amount of debris is slowing the investigation. Local activists took to their bikes to promote awareness about global climate change today. The Moving Planet Iowa City event included a 3.5 mile bike ride and a one mile march starting at the Old Capitol and ending in City Park. The event in Iowa City is part of an international rally with over 2,000 events worldwide. While most events throughout the country took place Saturday, Iowa City had to delay the rally in order to work around the Hawkeye football game. One Iowa resident said while the day's activities were important, it is really the bigger picture that matters. I think events like this help on a single day, but what uh, needs to happen in my view is people need to talk about it every day at work, at home, at church, and in all the things they do every day. Organizers said the expected turnout of today's bike and walk was about 100 people. And Iowa City is known worldwide for its rich literary culture, and one group of graduate students from the Iowa Writers' Workshop is looking to keep that tradition alive with Iowa City's youth. DITV's Adrian Crossley has more on this story. This is Adrian Crossley here at the Iowa City Public Library, where they're hosting this year's Poemics Workshop. The Poemics Workshop is just one program that is sponsored by the Iowa Youth Writing Project. The Iowa Youth Writing Project was started about a year and a half ago to promote creativity and literary competence among Iowa City's young people. Many of the programs offered by the IYWP are of little or no cost to their participants. Uh, some writers' workshop graduates decided that there are all these wonderful writing programs at the university and there are all these great writers in town and the time was right to join Iowa City's unique literary history and community with its larger community. The Poemics Workshop consists of four Saturday sessions where the students work on their drawings and poems. The students will choose which of their works they like best and those works will be published and sold at Prairie Lights Bookstore. It's, it's like, it's really, it's creative. I've never really done anything with comics and poems put together. So. I really like um, being able to do poetry and comics. I really like to draw, and I really like comics, and I really like poetry. So when I get kind of combine everything, I really like doing that. For more information about this program, you can go to the website listed at the bottom of your screen. If you are interested in donating to the Iowa Youth Writing Project or become a becoming a volunteer, go to www.iywp.org for more information. And still more to come from Daily Iowa TV. See how one UI student organization is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Plus, weekend results from the Iowa field hockey team's games that opened up Big Ten play. All of this and more to come, but first, let's take a look at our local weather forecast from Daily Iowa TV's Scott Jones. Scott, what can we expect for the rest of the week? Thanks, guys. This week looks to be another fairly nice one, but the beginning isn't looking too hot. We'll start off Monday morning with temperatures around 52 degrees and an 80% chance of rain. Showers will continue throughout the day, and we're only going to reach a high of about 59 in the afternoon. 
and by the evening hours the rain should be tapering off and will return to a chilly 52. Luckily things are looking up for the week ahead. We're going to be reaching highs in the 70s as we get close to the end of the week. No more rain and into the weekend we should be seeing clear skies and temperatures ranging between the mid 50s and upper 60s. That's your check of the weather. Back to you Emily. Thanks Scott. The National Program Teach for America is upping their recruitment of UI students. The program puts recent college graduates in a five-week training program over the summer, then places them in two-year two teaching contracts at schools with primarily high-risk, low-income students. In 2010, there were 21 Teach for America core members at the UI, and in 2011, only 12. Usually about 50 people apply, only 14% of applicants are accepted. And now they're promoting the program on campus to boost that number of applicants to 150. And One UI Group is marking its 30th anniversary here on campus. Daily IM TV reporter Josh Bolander had the opportunity to learn how student video productions is celebrating. While the outside of the University of Iowa's Linquist building might lull you into thinking it's just another campus building, inside it provides the home of one of the most popular and sustained student groups that the university has to offer, Student Video Productions, who are celebrating their 30th anniversary this year at the university. Student Video Productions is an organization that's devoted to helping um, cinema or you know just any student in general uh, learn basic video equipment you know we uh, we produce shows for a uh, UITV that air every Sunday um, it's it's a really good opportunity for students to you know learn how to develop to work with a camera or learn editing software uh, but there's also lots of opportunities for you know anybody who wants to get into like the film business SVP's mission is to provide a collaborative and creative outlet that transcends academic discipline, experience, and background, and expands the forum for student expression, and has been progressing annually since it was chartered in the fall of 1981. You can work on a show, you can talk to, you can talk to us, and you can produce your own show if you want to, uh, you know, and get, get uh, your material out there onto UITV, which it broadcasts to like 220,000 households out there, so it's, it really is a great opportunity. Student Video Productions holds a meeting every Sunday at the IMU and encourages interested students to join their listserv. Josh Bolander, Daily Iowan TV. For more information on how to get involved with Student Video Productions, go online to svp.uiowa.edu. UI graduate student enrollment is slightly down this semester, but university officials aren't concerned. Enrollment dropped less than one percentage point, which is a smaller decrease than the national average. John Keller, Dean of the UI Graduate College, said he's not worried about the decrease as they pay more attention to shifts within programs rather than overall percentage. Read more on the story in tomorrow's Daily Iowan. And plenty of students from the University of Iowa leave campus to study abroad, but some may not realize the university welcomes just as many international students each year. Daily Iowan TV's Reed Chandler takes a look at a club on campus dedicated to helping foreign visitors acclimate to American culture. Students at the University of Iowa are making friends from afar. The organization Global Buddy strives to pair each foreign exchange student with an Iowa student to better help adjust them to American culture. Uh, kind of a mentoring program, um, also just a student group for people, international students get together with American students and where each American student is paired with someone. And we meet a couple times a month um, ex just with our buddy and then we also meet uh, as a group uh, every week. Iowa students involved in the group have previously studied abroad and used their cultural experiences to help the visitors. I studied abroad spring of my sophomore year and then when I came back I joined the group um, and so I've had I'm now in my third buddy. The people here at the Office of Study Abroad work to pair each exchange student with one American student helping make their world a smaller place. Because when we have them fill out their application to come and be an exchange student, the Global Buddies application is one of the things they need to return. Um, just because it, they don't have to be a part of the program, but a lot of them really like to be. With group parties, trips to festivals and concerts, and sometimes just a lift to the grocery store, Global Buddies gives foreign students an American experience. They don't necessarily, there might be like two or three of them from the same school, but it's not like a huge group of them, and they you generally don't really know each other before they come here. So it's a great way for them to make friends. Reed Chandler, Daily Island TV. Organizers say the club has been on campus for several years, but just recently earned official status and funding. And now Daily Island TV sports reporter Tyler Culver joins us at the desk 
Tyler, we saw a Hawkeye squad this weekend that looked like a lot like the squad we saw last weekend in the second half against Pitt. Yes, Adam, and in the last two quarters of the Pitt game, combined with the first two quarters of the Louisiana Monroe game, quarterback Jason Vandenberg had just under 600 passing yards, which is something Hawk fans have to love. The Iowa football team took the field Saturday against Louisiana Monroe, looking to find answers to questions on both sides of the football. Daily Iowa TV sports director Jake Abrams was there. The black and gold looking to go 3-0 and at Kinnick Stadium on Saturday, and they came out of the gates ready to play some football. Beautiful day in Iowa City as the Hawks march down the field to open the game. First and goal for the Hawks, James Vandenberg would take it into the end zone himself to put the Hawks up 7-0 early. Let's go to the end of the first quarter. James Vandenberg looking and finding and completing to Marvin McNutt. That was the start of a big day for that duo. End of the first, 14-3 Iowa. We head to the second quarter, but the Vandenberg McNutt train hasn't left town yet. The two would connect in the same spot for the 17-yard black and gold touchdown. The fans love it as Iowa offense is heating up. Iowa goes up 28-3 to head into the third quarter. ULM quarterback Colton Browning trying to pick his team up. He runs the ball in four yards for the touchdown. The Warhawks get on the board, but that's all the excitement they would get. It was a game that showcased the receivers, but running back Marcus Coker wanted some action too. He gets the ball just inside the end zone to put Iowa up 35 to 10. It was all Marvin McNutt, but James wants to get the younger guys involved too. He'll complete a 23 yard TD to the emerging Keenan Davis. Hawks seal this one up and cruise to victory to close out the non-conference schedule. I've come back the last two weeks and play better, end up getting two wins and uh, head into the bye week and uh, uh, with the three and one record, we're pleased about that. So the Hawks win 45-17 here at Kinnick Stadium over Louisiana Monroe, and the Hawks keep improving from week to week. James Vandenberg he threw for 399 yards last week, another 270 today. Here's what some teammates had to say about him. This guy's a leader, and he comes out and competes, gives his heart out. He's the first person to tell you to stay after practice. Let's let's get some timing right. This guy he's, he's just a uh, really good leader, and he he, um, he throws the thing. So. And with Vandenberg, the Hawks are scoring the ball. This is the fourth straight game they've scored more than 30 points, and they hope to carry that over into Big Ten play in two weeks. From Kinnick Stadium, Jake Abrams, Daily Iowa TV. Thanks, Jake. The Hawkeyes will now enjoy a bye week as they prepare for their Big Ten conference slate, which will start with a trip to Penn State next Saturday, October the 8th. The Iowa women's volleyball team had a big opening weekend for their Big Ten season at Carver Hawkeye Arena Friday with number 24 Ohio State and Saturday with a huge match against number 5 Penn State. The Hawks fell 3-1 against the Buckeyes and turned around to play the Nittany Lions the next night. Herky was all amped up for this match, but unfortunately that wouldn't be enough for the hometown team as highly ranked Penn State squad was just too much to handle for the Hawks. Iowa made it tough in the first and second sets, falling in each to a score of 24 to 23. The Frans were back and forth battles for each squad, but the Nittany Lions were able to pull ahead each time where it mattered most. In the third set, Penn State claimed the 3-0 sweep using an 18-4 run to grab the 25-14 victory. The loss sets Iowa's record to 10-5 overall, 0-2 of the Big Ten. Iowa will try for its first Big Ten win Friday in Ann Arbor when they take on Michigan at 6 p.m. The Iowa women's field hockey team saw its seven-match winning streak come to an end as the squad lost to Penn State on Sunday. Both teams had equal possession time throughout the first half, resulting in a scoreless game at the end of the first 35 minutes. Despite equal shots and possession in the second half, however, the number 10 Nittany Lions got the win over the number 13 Hawkeyes. Five minutes into the second half, Penn State scored their first goal of just Ten minutes later after that, though, Penn State got its second goal off a corner. The final goal came in the 69th minute with 15 seconds left in regulation, resulting in a 3-0 loss for the Hawkeyes. Coach Grisbaum said afterwards that the team had a lot to figure out still going forward with the rest of the Big Ten schedule ahead. I'm just kind of obviously figure out the differences, or we already know the differences, but make sure the team knows the differences between Michigan and Penn State and just kind of regroup. I think this... This loss on our home field is going to hurt quite a bit, so we have to kind of put it behind us and get geared up to play Michigan on the road. The Iowa field hockey team next heads to Michigan on Saturday to continue their Big Ten play. So, Emily, hopefully they can get that first Big Ten win in this next game. Yeah, I definitely hope so. Thanks, Tyler. 
And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Monday's pages of the Daily Iowan, read about why researchers are working to stop the wild bee population from diminishing, plus read the Daily Iowan sports staff's analysis of the Hawks' win over Louisiana Monroe. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. You can tune in tomorrow at the same time or check us out online at dailyiowan.com.